friends and colleagues in God's mission. We have tremendously high expectations of Christmas. We want everything to be perfect. We have pictures in our minds of children playing, church choir singing, and people smiling and getting along. But often it is not that way. At least this year, in the midst of the pandemic, Christmas celebration takes a different turn altogether. Because something has interrupted our normal course of celebration in the form of Corona virus. We look to the Christmas season to be a time of perfect peace, harmony and joy. But it is not that way this time. But what is interesting to note here is that the first Christmas also was not that way as we expect Christmas to be. There was an interruption or there was a disruption even during the first Christmas celebration or Christmas event. Interruptions or disruptions can happen at any good time. Consider the timing of Joseph and Mary's interruption. They were to be married. Like Christmas, an engagement is supposed to be a wondrous time, especially in the past. But it was during this time that an angel appeared to Mary and told her that she would miraculously, as a virgin, conceive and give birth to the Son of God. What a joyful news! Yet, what an interruption! How would she explain her pregnancy to Joseph? Would he believe her? Would he be willing to take on that responsibility? This was not in their plans, and yet she accepted it. We know how Joseph responded. He didn't believe her. How could he? His plans for a happy home with a woman he loved were dashed before his eyes. His life, as well as hers, had been powerfully interrupted or disrupted. If we are not careful, our response to an interruption or disruption can send us down the wrong path. Joseph nearly went down the wrong path. When he discovered Mary's pregnancy, he was devastated. He couldn't buy her story about a virgin conception. As much as he loved her and wanted to be with her, there was nothing to do but divorce her. In fact, Joseph had the right to have her stoned to death for infidelity. Yet, because he was a good man, he did not want to harm her or even embarrass her. He would divorce her privately. This was Joseph's human response to a powerful disruption or interruption. But what a mistake it would have been. Often an interruption brings on a knee-jerk reaction. We make decisions that if we were better informed, we would not make. We must be careful that when we face an interruption or disruption, we don't just react according to our own fears and feelings. The key to handling an interruption is to get God's take on it. Thankfully, God rescued Joseph from his error. I can imagine Joseph having learned Mary's situation, tossing and turning in bed, trying to decide what to do. 
Finally, he decides he will divorce her privately. But while he is sleeping, an angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream and says, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. What she says is true. The child in her womb is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. This is in fulfillment of God said through Isaiah the prophet, the virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son and he shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Joseph awoke with a changed mind. He would not divorce Mary, but rather he would take her as his wife and help raise his miraculous child. He had gotten God's perspective in his interruption or disruption. When you encounter an interruption, whatever it may be, don't react according to your own feelings and thoughts. Seek God's direction. Remember Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Think about Him all your ways and He will guide you on the right paths. There are three words I would like to share with you which would be of help to us as we experience interruption or disruption. One is prayer. The first thing to do when your life is interrupted is to stop and pray. Pray for guidance, pray for courage, pray for help. When you look to God, God will help you. The second word which we may remember as we face interruptions is perspective. Put the interruption in the proper perspective. Try to get the divine perspective into the interruption that you face. How bad is it really? How long will it actually be important? What difference will it make even if it continues? Try to perceive God's perspective in the interruption that you face. The third word which I would like to share with you which would be of help to you as you face an interruption is providence. Keep in mind always that God in His providence is still in control of your life. Nothing can happen to you without the notice of your Heavenly Father. He still has all of the hairs on your head numbered. Interruptions can at times positively redirect our lives. And this was true of Joseph and Mary. Their plans were interrupted. Can you imagine a more wonderful privilege or a more challenging responsibility than to be the human parents of the Son of God? The direction their future took was not what they had planned, but it was so much better. Have you ever considered that God could do that kind of thing in your life, especially now as we face the global pandemic. Not that you would be made the parents of the Son of God, but that God would take what seems to be an interruption, an unforeseen problem, and use it to set your life on a new and better path. Whatever interruption you may ask 
or you may say that you are enduring right now why not look at it in a different light and ask god are you using this to do something great in my life then begin to look for the marvelous things god will do whatever interruption you may be experiencing this christmas maybe the global pandemic there is one thing you can do stop and give thanks to god for jesus christ and as you praise and thank god even in the midst of difficult circumstances something of the peace that jesus came to bring will be yours and mine friends i wish you all a very blessed christmas thank you